So I have uh, this difficult task to keep you awake after lunch talking about safety requirements for the design. So I try to do my, uh, my best. Maybe I will ask you once in a while some questions, so be ready and uh, just to keep, you, to keep you awake. So I'm, talking, I'm going to talk about this safety requirement for the design, this publication of the agency that is known as SSR2-1. SSR stands for Specific Safety Requirement. So we have at the top of requirement, we have some general requirements that apply to all facilities and activities. Then we have more specific requirement, requirements that apply to a specific facility. This is the case of nuclear power plant. Then we have safety requirement for research reactor, safety requirement for waste, and so on. So we are focusing now only on the design of a nuclear power plant. This is the document, the real document, what it looks like. I am sure that many of you already knew, know this document. It is, I try to advertise, is the most clicked document in the series of the agency. Huh? Because we are accounting the number of clicking in one document, this is the first place. So it's a document that I think everybody of you should have, and every day you read a little piece and meditate a little bit can help you. So the, as you see in this slide, this do document can be used for two different functions. First, to give indications and the rules to the designer, how to design a safe nuclear power plant, but also for the reviewer, the safety assessor, how to assess the safety of nuclear power plant. It's clear, if I give a requirement to the design, the, design has to, the designer has to design according to this requirement. And the person or the, the, the organization who is making the safety assessment has to assess, has to verify that this requirement is met. But the requirement is always the same. So the, this publication was uh, prepared, published in uh, 2012. And the, the work was done before the Fukushima accident. The Fukushima accident, if you remember, happened in March 2011. So the document was already prepared and was approved just one month. The final approval document was one month after the accident. So the, our Commission for Safety Standard was already aware of the accident when they approved this, this document. But they, they uh, were convinced that the document was uh, already good enough also to cover most of the aspect uh, covered by, Fuku that uh, happened in Fukushima. But the, the, after the accident, the uh, agency started an activity to review and revise, if it was necessary, all the standards for nuclear safety. And this was the case also of this document. And now there is a version called Revision 1 of this document. This has been already approved by the Board of Governors. So it's a document, valid document, but it's not printed yet. It's now in the process of printing. So you, I think you don't find this new Revision 1 in the, in the site of our safety standard. But it's a matter of weeks, I mean, very soon. But I will tell you what are the main differences that uh, have been introduced in the revision one. Uh, I will go through many concepts that already Tony touched this morning. So don't be surprised if we repeat something. And uh, you will see maybe also some, I use some of the slides that Tony presented. But I try to give you maybe some additional information and focus a little more maybe on the aspect that I realized that there, are some, uh, there were some questions this morning. So and feel free to ask a question at any moment, interrupt me, you know, there's no problem. So here you see uh, is represented the hierarchy of our document that you have seen this morning and uh, the, the safety objective that was uh, uh, discussed by Tony this morning 
and this uh, uh, safety objective is supplemented by 10 safety principles. And this is cover all the aspects of uh, the radiation protection, radiation safety, and nuclear safety. And there is one principle very important I would like to draw your, your attention on, and it's called prevention of accident. And this is practically the origin, the top of all the requirements for safety of nuclear power plant. Everything that we have in this book can be in a way or another related to this, to this principle. So it's very important to keep this in mind. These are the three safety functions that have been discussed in the, in the morning, so there is nothing else to add. I want also to mention to you these three safety functions should be fulfilled in any circumstances. So it's something we have to control the reactivity in normal operation, in anticipated operational occurrences, in design basis accident, and in severe accident. There is always, in a way or another, control the reactivity. We have to remove, if you want to stabilize the, the final uh, situation of the core, we have to remove the heat from normal operation, accident conditions, and uh, severe accident. Always should be removed. If you don't remove the heat, the, the core continues to degenerate and release radioactivity. So that is something to be, do, to be done and also the, the confinement. If you don't want to release anything to the environment, we have, we have to confine in any situation. What is different from one situation and another is the acceptance criteria can be different. In normal operation, we want to release very little. In accident, we can accept to release a little more and so on. Huh? We will uh, we'll go back to, to this. So the functions are always the same. But the acceptance criteria, we can call success criteria in this case, are different. This is a flow diagram of uh, the defense in depth, the way it is interpreted in, uh, at uh, the agency. So defense in depth is a general strategy and relies on different barriers to keep the, the fission product confined. But this is a minor aspect of the defense in depth. It's important because you need the, if you don't have a barrier, of course, you lose. But what is important in the, in, the, in the concept of the defense in depth is how we approach the situation to keep the plant in a, state con, in a, in a safe condition. So in the defense in depth, we address the normal operation of the plant. We try to to uh, understand what are the possible failure and malfunctions we have. And we have to be ready in case we have a failure, we have a malfunction, to react to this situation and bring the, the plant back to the normal situation. If this is not possible, maybe it's not, the, if you have an event sequences that proceeds to a more severe situation, we also to predict what can be this situation, what kind of accident, and we have to have the capability to do deal with this accident. But always to think maybe something goes wrong. So what happens next and what do we next? So the defense in depth is a, is a general strategy that helps us to control a failure and the consequences of failure at different stages of severity. This should be clear. Huh? From, and then we, we will see uh, how we, it, I think already here on the, on the right side, there are the plant states, oh, sorry. There are the plant states that can be associated to each level of the defense in depth. Normal operation, anticipated operation occurrences, design basis accident, and design extension condition. And, as at the last resource, if you really lose control of the plant and we release radioactivity to the environment, we have to have means to protect the people with some, uh, with implementation of some emergency uh, activity and relocation of people, sheltering, all these uh, uh, measures. So this is uh, 
the flow diagram of the defense in depth. I'm sure you have seen this already, but it's important, uh, then you will understand immediately why, to, 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 to discuss a little bit again. Then, an effective implementation of defense in depth requires at all levels, one to five, conservative approach, large margins, that, that is, conservative approach means implement enough margins, large margins, quality assurance, and safety culture. This is something general that applies to everything. So this is, I will try to give you what is the rationale behind the safety requirement. What is the ori origin of the safety requirement? And these are what we call the main pillars of the, the safety of nuclear power plant design. You see, first, the fundamental safety principle, that is the objective, what we have to achieve. Some telephone, I don't know. The, then the three cent, uh, fundamental functions, that means what we have to do to achieve that objective. And then the defense in depth that says how. So objective, what to do to achieve the objective, and how. The defense in depth tells you how. Tells us how robust the plant is, how many barriers we have, how many control systems, how many protection, prote uh, safety systems, and so on. So, and you see, with all the requirements, all the requirements we have is really an explicit demonstration of this, of this achievement of these pillars. So all the requirements are saying how, in the defense in depth, we keep the safety function to meet the objective. So this is really the, uh, the origin of all our safety requirements for the design. So these are very, I mean, very general concept, but you have to keep in mind. And this is, these things are very important when you, for the first time, have to assess the safety of uh, a design for which you don't have any experience. It's a new design for which there are not so many rules already written. Then how do you, where, where do you start? You have to prove in any circumstances that you meet all with the safety, the, the, the fundamental safety function, and do this with high reliability, applying strong, a strong concept of the defense in depth. Huh? So why this, uh, this requirement are so important? First, because they define what I've discussed so far. They discuss uh, the uh, show and define an effective safety approach and establish the safety level. If a plant meets all these requirements, is a safe plant. If it doesn't meet all these require, this requirements, is the plant less safer. Is exceeds this requirement is even safer, what is required. But this is, how can you say this plant is safe enough? When a plant is safe enough? Some people say, oh, when the, the core frequency damage is 10 minus 5. But it's not sufficient. That is not sufficient. The plant is safe enough if you meet all the requirements for the design. Of course, I'm talking about the document of the agency, but member states, they have a different set of requirements, but 99% of times they are very similar to this, maybe with some specific uh, uh, changes. Reflect the state of the art, because these documents are revised periodically. So all what is new, uh, deriving from uh, knowledge, deriving from research programs or from experience from accident that happen are maybe with some years of delay, but they are incorporated in the standard at the agency. Reflect the views and the licensing practices of the majority of the member states, and reflect a large consensus. This is a document that has been approved by all member states of the agency, has been approved by the board of governors of the agency, so that means there are more or less everybody agreed on this. Then provide the links with the requirement for site evaluation and for operation. Because, of course, the design is affected by the site. Because the external events that are generated are possible 
be generated in, uh, in a specific site will affect the design. Because the level of earthquake that you have in one site is different from the level of earthquake you have in another site. Because the, the, the seismicity is not the same everywhere. So the loads induced by the vibration of the, the earthquakes yet are different from one side to another. So, the, so, this, so the, the, the in, it, there are some requirements that link the, the, the rule of the design with the, 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 the hazard evaluation derived from the, the site evaluation. No? And the same for, for the operation, the design uh, should provide the possibility to write uh, proper, uh, proper um, operating procedures and uh, should also provide a plant that can be operated easily. No? Because you can design a plant that is almost impossible to operate. So, and uh, is providing for easy and safe operation over the lifetime of the plant, taking into consideration all the degradation phenomena due to aging and, and so on. But these are quite general concepts I think uh, you, you are familiar with. But this, nevertheless, I think it's better to have uh, uh, a review of this. Then uh, is the main reference, at least one of the main references, is to, to conduct the, the safety review services that we have uh, at the agency. So the agency sometimes is uh, asked by member states to review a design, to review a safety analysis report. And the agency is providing this service, but using as a main reference the standard of the agency. Okay? And then uh, provide some recommendation if there, is some, if there are some problem. The agency provides some recommendation on how to achieve a better compliance with, with this document. And is, I said before, is the basis for a safety assessment of a nuclear power plant. Another important aspect that significantly contribute to establishing, just finish this statement and I'm with you, contribute to establishing a common safety approach and the common terminology. Yes, yes, I've seen just, uh, no, no, it's the, the, the other colleague. So this is very important because we are talking, you see this morning, talking about safety system, talking about item important to safety. But I would put another big problem on the table, defense in depth. I'm sure if I ask many of you what, what is your perception and what is according in your organization defense in depth, you come out with different questions. Uh, that nothing is wrong because it can be, there are different. But I think now, in, in the nuclear community, we would be, uh, everything is uh, interlinked. And uh, uh, so it, it's, it's much better to have a, a common language that everybody understands each other in the same, the same way. So this is, I think, a very important contribution of this document. OK, you have a question? Can we try to, unless it's very important, to have the question at the end, because I think with this microphone going back and forward, we, we, uh, unless it's a clarification, something very important at the moment, so we can, we can take this. Huh? If it's something we can delay, defer to the end, I think is a, is a, is a little better. For, so we, we can spend maybe the last 20 minutes just having a question and answer. Huh? Then this document is used as a basis for establishing the the regulatory, the regulation in several countries. There are countries that adopted the requirement of the agency in their law. Just they made copy and paste. And they put the stamp and that's it. Other countries, they use this document as a main reference. They, they wrote, but they were inspired by this document. So this is another, another use of this document. The SSR2-1 is a revision of a formal requirement called NSR1. Maybe also this was on the market for about 10 years, was published in the year 2000. So it's, it's quite known document. And you can see the structure of this document. I go very quickly because practically the new document reflects the same structure. 
we have uh, an introductory part when there is explained this main safety objective and concept like defense and that this. But this part does not contain requirement. Then we have uh, some general requirement for management of safety, technical requirements, requirement for uh, plant systems. And these are, like uh, Tony mentioned this morning, is a series of statements with the shall. Each of these requirements has a shall. Huh? So this is the, the structure. And what was changed compared to this document that was on the market for more than 10 years in the new one? What was really the need to change? And this, as I told, mentioned to you, was done before Fukushima. So it's not affected by, by the, the Fukushima accident. There was, of course, at least we think, a general improvement of the text. Some repetition were eliminated. A new style was, uh, was used in the requirement. If you look at this requirement now, there are some bold statements, and then underneath some statements like normal character. All are requirements. There is no difference of importance, but the 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 bold, the, the, the requirements in bold character are more general, and we call key requirements. So the other are really more supporting of this requirement and better articulating and explaining the requirement. But all requirements are important. All of them should be fulfilled. There was the independence was more enhance the independence of level of the defense in depth. So when you think about level of the defense in depth, you have to think that in each level of defense in depth, there are systems, there are structures that perform what is required by that level. So when you say independence of level, in reality, you want that system that act in one, in one level are independent as much as possible from system in another level. So if I have a safety system that works in design basis accident, and I have another system we don't call safety system but works in severe accident, this system should be independent. The problem is to which level we want to reach independence. Because absolute independence is not feasible. Because we have only one operator in the plant. We have only one containment in the plant. So we cannot have one operator for normal operation, one operator for DBA, one operator that I'm exaggerating. But to make you understand that it's, quite, uh, it's almost impossible to reach the absolute independence. But when you enter in the level of system, you are talking about supporting system, I'm mentioning compressed air, electric power. I mean, to have a full independence of this, that means you, know, you have to feed some components with one line, electric line. You have to feed the system from another independent. You know, if you have emergency power to feed some system, you have to have complete independent power for another system. And then all the IC should be independent and so on. But what we say, you have to, this is a sort of objective just to, to reach as much as possible, a goal to reach as much as possible, to get closer uh, as possible to this. Huh? But having in mind that the full, complete independence is not possible, but to some extent can be done. So this is, and on this aspect, I think we have a dedicated lecture at the end of the week. So you will go into this in, uh, in detail with many examples. So you will see this again. Then we have requirements for inter interfaces between safety, security, and safeguards. These are different aspects. But at the end, we design only one plant, only one design. So this design should meet all these requirements at the same time. Huh? Then requirement for auxiliary systems we added. And then uh, detailed description of conditions like the we spell out the design basis in more clear terms. We modify a little bit some definition. We include a new definition like accident condition and design basis accident. And uh, we have always a very clear, explicit 
distinction between systems for DBA, safety systems, and system for design extension condition. I come back to this. Safety feature for design extension conditions. And we have introduced also qualitative radiological acceptance criteria for different plant conditions. This was not in the, in the previous. So some very important topics have been uh, uh, clarified and uh, enriched for with more uh, information. The structure of the document is uh, the same as before. We have introduction. We have some general requirement and more specific requirements. Coming from uh, the defense in depth, this is the defense in depth according to INSAG 10 that uh, uh, Tony presented this morning. And you see here we have the five levels and there is the objective we have to reach in each level and what are the means that are implemented into the, into the design to reach this level. And now there is a, a, so there is a correspondence between level of the defense in depth and uh, plant state. So when we say level one, people associate level one with normal operation. Level two, okay, is uh, transient, anticipated operational currency. Level three, designed by accident. But this is uh, artificial. There is no reason to do this link. We can, uh, we can have uh, even more the level of the defense in there. But this is a practice now. Everybody is following this. And uh, so also our requirement, also in the requirement, you don't find strictly this link. It's not explicitly said, but it's a, it's a common practice. So I think I encourage you to follow. Now with SSR2 slash one, we introduce a new, a new element, a new category of accident that are these design extension conditions without core melt. And we have to find a place in the table of the defense in depth. The, the easiest way, let's, let's add another level of the defense just dedicated for that. Why we have to have five levels, we have six. And this was a proposal of some member state. They said, put a new one. And others said, no, split level three. And because these are the design extension without core melt, that's practically like, uh, very similar to design basis accident. Just one failure of a safety system more. But I mean, it's, same. it's the same beast. So put in level three, three A and three B. Other people, no, 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 why you have to, don't touch the level three that in my regulation is frozen. I don't want to touch my regulation. Why don't you split level four and put there? Okay, okay. put where you like. The important is that is there, but important is the design is what you do in your plant, in your design to deal with the situation. This is what's important. It's not important if it's 3B, 4A, 4C, or 7. It doesn't matter that. Huh? So that is something is, uh, I think you should bear in mind. So these are, these are the, the, the content of, the, of the, the design requirement. You see this, uh, the, the structure is very similar, similar to, to the old one, and the practically you, you can go through the, through the book. We don't have to, to bother you now with this, all this uh, list. Coming back to the requirement, to the, uh, the plant equipment that Tony showed this morning, I just want to add a, a little more things. Why, first of all, is important the distinction? First, when we talk about plant equipment, this can be structure, system, or components. Huh? So rather than say SSC, we say plant equipment, but these are the same, the same meaning. But the first important subdivision is between items important to safety and items not important to safety. What is the difference, the main difference between these two? If an item important to safety fails, you have some radiological consequences. These radiological consequences can be very small, very large, it depends, but you have some consequences. If the item not important to safety fails, you don't have radiological consequences. Huh? If the, the kitchen of the nuclear power plant or the, Phase, you don't have lunch, but you don't have radiological consequences. Right? So it's not important to say. But the, another important factor is that for the 
the item important to safety, you have to apply the classification. So for these items, you have to say how important to safety the item is. So you have to rank the, the, the importance to safety. Of course, the other you don't care. And then, of course, we have, uh, under this, we have safety-related system and safety system we discussed this, this morning. I mean, all these are items important to safety, but the design rules that we implement in these categories are, in some cases, completely different. We have very strict rules. Tony mentioned the, the, the single failure criteria that is a requirement for safety system. It's not a requirement for other safety-related system. So this is very legal and the licensing implication, very important, this subdivision. But this, I mentioned one important criteria, but there are many others because the, the classification is completely different. The way you make maintenance in a safety system is completely different from the way you make in other items important to safety, and so on. The quality of the, of the items, uh, the, the, the codes that are using are different, and so on. So there is this big, keep this uh, uh, distinction. So let's see now what are these plant, the plant states of, of the, of the that we have to consider for the design of the plant. And this is things you know very well. We have operational states and accident conditions. The operational states are normal operation. I don't have to explain to you what normal operation is. And anticipated operational occurrences. These are these deviation from normal operation, but you can predict. You know that happens. And happens quite frequently. Maybe some happens. Uh, at least once per year or even more, it depends on uh, the, the, your design. But it's something that for sure you experiment during the, during the, the life of the plant. That have, you have design basis accidents that are more important, accidents that have serious consequences. And then I'm asking you, how many design basis accidents do you think will happen in the life of a power plant? I should cover the table, the table below, because, but anyway. It can happen once, twice, 10 times, 100 times. What is your perception? Everybody sleeping or what? No one. This is something that should not happen. So this morning we were saying, why we put so much effort in the item uh, important to safety? Uh, we don't rely on the safety system because we don't want to, to reach that level. So the design basis accident is something very rare. Unfortunately, severe accidents have been, history showed that severe accidents have been more frequent than large DBA. We never had uh, a large brake uh, locker in a plant, a huh? large pipe that broke, and that never happened. And we studied for years and years, and even Tony developed code to start this accident. And this frustration, yes, this accident never happened. <laughs> no, that is a good point. No, I mean, it's, it's good that that did not happen. But you see, we put a lot of effort in some situations that uh, are very rare in the plant that are the, the most expensive system in the plant are to deal with this accident that never happened. <laughs> and we hope it will never happen again. But anyway, so the plant is designed for these very rare events. And the plant is designed also for some more severe situation that can be an evolution of a design basis accident. Because the design basis accident is controlled by the safety system very well designed with the single failure criteria, but you can have also have a redundant system. You know, if you lose the power, <laughs> you lose all the systems. <laughs> and so th that means that you can anticipate that you have to face situations that are more severe than design basis accident. So you have to know what to do. Huh? And this situation more severe than design basis accident, we call design extension condition, because there was an attempt to extend the range of situation for which we designed the plant. 
extend uh, the extension condition. This can be without core melt, and we can be with core melt. Then I give you some examples so you know exactly. Probably you know some of this, but you don't know that they are dead. But you, you heard about this. And in the table, you have uh, some ind indication of the frequency, the range of frequency uh, to, to, that can help to, uh, to group this, this, uh, these events. Huh? And so let's see now what happened to this uh, from switching from moving from NSR1 to the new uh, requirement. You see in, uh, in, S in, uh, uh, in NSR1, we had a normal operation, anticipated operational occurrences, and DBA. Hmm? And then, of course, severe accident was already included because se severe accident have been addressed in nuclear safety and in design of nuclear plant for, for a long time. It's not something new. But before, there were no in the plant specific system, specific features designed only for severe accident. In front of a severe accident, we were using the system that were already in the plant because they have already a lot of margins. They can work in more severe, in condition more severe than those considered in the design, and, and so on. There were measures of, uh, of accident management. I'm sure you are familiar, but there were no feature designed for the severe accident. So the severe accident were not part of the design basis of the plant. Now we change this in, uh, in uh, SSR2 slash 1. You see now the design extension conditions are part of the accident condition that we consider for the design. That means, of course, not all systems. The systems that are important to deal with severe accidents should be designed for severe accidents. What is the, the most important system to deal with a severe accident? Or the most important structure, the most important component in your view? Think when you talk about severe accident, we have to imagine a molten core, a molten core that can be even outside of the vessel. That is the situation we have to face. How you deal with this? You deal with the containment, but you know, you understand that the containment should be designed in a particular way to deal with this situation. So that means the core melt situation, at least some of this, should be the design basis for the containment. So the containment should be capable to keep a molten core, to cool a molten core, and to avoid that there are uh, reactivity excursions. So we have to design for this. So this is a big, is a big step. This, is, of course, is already implemented in the modern plant, the, the latest plant on the market now. They already have this concept. Maybe they don't call deck, they call somewhere else, but this is already there. But in old plants, most of operating plants in the world, this was not the case. So this is a big step. And it's a big step, but there's also very strong, important economical uh, impact. And it's not something that... Uh, so, but that is, I think, one of the key points that you have to bear in mind. So this is, uh, I think, probably one of the, the strongest uh, uh, changes. Now, here, in this, uh, this slides, we try to show you what are the, the factors that provide input to the design basis of each set of structure, or system, and components. The, for example, the design basis of, uh, of, the equip sorry, of the equipment for operational states is derived by the normal operation conditions. That means the power, the, the pressure of the fluids, the temperature, how many transient I have, how many changes of power, and, and so on. And this gives uh, the input to, to design correctly the system for normal operation. But this is only a part. Then, of course, we have also the majority of transient, because we include in the, in the operational uh, uh, states 
also the anticipated operational occurrences. So these provide input to design correctly this system, but they, they are not the only input. Of course, this system should, be, should work in presence of loads due to internal hazards or external hazards, can be an earthquake, can be a flood, can be strong wind, all this. And, and then we have some criteria, some margins that we apply only to this equipment. Because the margin, for example, just to mention what was said this morning again, the, the margin that we require for this equipment is different from the margin we require on this. Not all equipment is designed with the same rules. It depends on the function of the equipment. Huh? So for the, for the safety systems, you see, the main input comes from the list of the accidents we have to mitigate. From the earthquake, we consider for this system and for the criteria that Tony mentioned this morning, criteria, some criteria of maximum temperature of the fuel, maximum oxidation, and so on. All this help to design this system, right? provide the input to design this system. And the same for the, for the design extension condition. Focus, let's focus more on those with core melt because for this, the situation is very similar to DBA. But for this condition, we have really to design some features to mitigate the core melt. And mitigating the core melt means to deal with the phenomena associated with the core melt. Because if we have a core melt, means that we have hydrogen generation. Because you don't, you know, we have metal in contact with the steam, so you have hydrogen generated before the core melt. But if you have a core melt, for sure you have hydrogen. So you have to deal with hydrogen. You have to recombine, to eliminate whatever you want to do. So to deal with this, you have to design something to deal with this situation. So this is a feature. Or if you want to retain, uh, Tony showed this large cavity, yeah? but the cavity cannot be with the plastic huh? on, the, on the bottom. Should be designed to, 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 to contain a molten core, high temperature and this very aggressive material. So you have to design for this. To design this, you should know exactly what kind of accident you have in mind. Yeah? So you see, the, the, the defined the, define the, 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 the design basis of each group of this SSC is very complicated because they are inf affected by many, many factors and they are, dif they are different for each of them. Okay? And the approach is not the same everywhere in the world. Different countries, they have different approaches. So it's not, the, 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 it's not so simple. Huh? So let's, uh, so now I want just uh, go through a couple of slides and uh, try to, to show what is uh, really the main difference, the main implication between the considering the DBA and the, the design extension conditions. DBA, I mean, is very well known because it's a classic now. All plants are designed for DBA and so uh, everybody knows that is a set of accident postulated. Huh? Means we assume that this accident will happen. So what do we do? We design some system to deal with this. So the DBA are used to define the design base of the safety system. We have, we have seen there. And, uh, and to bring the plan to, the control, uh, to control this accident. This, this system, we have said already, have designed with the application of single failure criteria. Key parameters do not exceed specified design limit. These are always, these are limits imposed by the safety authority. And during the evolution of this accident, you should not exceed these limits. And of course, you have to make all the calculation, the simulation, how the, the accident evolves and demonstrate that, for example, the temperature of the cladding should not exceed speci specified value the enthalpy of the fuel should not exceed specified value. The thickness of oxidation in the cladding should not exceed a specified value. This should be, this is really important because it is important for the licensing and uh, the safety authority will review all these uh, all, all, all uh, results of the safety analysis 
and verify that the, the plant is really designed to meet this, uh, this, this criteria. And another important thing is that design basis accident shall be analyzed in a conservative manner. Conservative manner implies that you include the large safety margin. Clear? So this is the design basis. But what is another important point, what is the radiological impact that now in a modern plant we can accept in condition of the design basis accident. The design basis accident should not have any relevant impact outside of the plant. That means, I try to now to, to be a little uh, schematic, and uh, the, that means if the farmer is working close to the site of nuclear power plant, there is a large, large break locker in the plant, thousands of lights in the control room, the farmer can continue to dig his, his field. Practically that is what we are requiring, at, at least from a technical point of view. So the plant should have intrinsic capability to deal with the situation without exceeding the, the level of, of um, releases or exceeding by very little the level of releases that we accept for normal operation along the year during the life of the plant. So, the, so imagine how strong this feature should be. That is, a, looks very few words here, but to implement these few words, it's not easy because in some countries, design based accident, they are evacuating for many kilometers around the plant. So that is, uh, the, that was the old situation. This is, uh, uh, I forgot to, to tell you, this is very important. What I am saying now is applicable to new nuclear power plants. So the nuclear power plant of the last generation. Of course, the, 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 this requirement cannot be met 100% from the majority of existing plants. Although some of them, they had some backfitting program, they, are, they have been improved, but Still, many of them cannot meet this, uh, this requirement. This, sh this should be clear. Huh? So then it's uh, is, uh, is just a responsibility of each uh, member state, of each safety authority uh, to, decide, uh, to decide what to do in the case of old plant. So now, if we are going to the design extension condition, so this situation more severe, more or less uh, we already said what they are, think about when we talk about design extension condition. These are in the, always in the, in the large majority of the cases, situation that occur in case of multiple failure, not just one single failure. Because if there is one single failure, the system of the plant, the safety system can build because they are designed against a single failure. They are redundant. But if I have multiple failure, if I have two trains of emergency core cooling systems, and both of them fail for any reason. It can be an external event, or I lose the power in both of them. Electric power, if they are uh, powered uh, with electricity. So this is a situation more severe. And since the experience proved that some sequences of multiple failure have a frequency that can be higher than some uh, single failure event. Think about the, the large brake locker, you break, you know, one uh, guillotine brake of a big pipe has a, a probability, uh, frequency of occurrence better to occur that is uh, lower than to have a station blackout. Station blackout has been experimented in several plants. You know, these are two diesels or three diesels, diesel generators, and they don't start or two don't start, only one starts, and, and, and so on. So, the, so there are situations, real situations. It's not just extrapolating. As I said before, we had several severe accidents, core, molten core, starting from uh, TMI, and then uh, well, Chernobyl, and then uh, uh, Fukushima, and we never had a single DBA, design basis accident. So it's something that uh, is the reality that is uh, teaching us that this can happen, and so we have to do something. Huh? 
So the main purpose of the design extension condition is to ensure that accident conditions not considered in DBA are prevented or mitigated as much as uh, possible. We use the deck, this, uh, this set of accidents, to design the feature, to, to mitigate the deck. The, in, at least uh, in the safety requirement of the agency, the systems for design extension condition are not required to apply the single failure criteria. So we are more relaxed. But there are already some member states that implement the single failure criteria also for the feature for, for DEC. And design extension conditions can be analyzed with the best estimate I think we will, uh, I think during the, 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 the session on safety analysis, uh, accident uh, analysis, you will uh, uh, be explained much better these terms if you are not uh, very familiar with conservative approach and best estimate approach, but it's more relaxed approach, more realistic. There are, uh, there are less prescriptive rules to, to, be, to be followed. You just you make a physical analysis of the phenomena and you design with that without including this additional margin just because the safety authority asked you to do it. So th this is, is a big difference. Also, if this is still, this is what is in our requirement now, but maybe it will stay like this forever. Maybe it will be criticized and adjusted in the coming years, but that is the situation now. And what is the, the, the what are the quali qualitative uh, success criteria for the design extension condition. First is that the integrity of the containment, so the containment should keep, should be not leak tight as in case of other accidents, but should keep the integrity, or at least the structural integrity. Maybe some leakages are allowed, but the integrity should not collapse the containment. Should cope with the core melt situation. We said this before. And should allow to bring the plant in a controlled state. Regarding the radiological releases, radiological releases, of course, we cannot guarantee in this situation we can meet the, the, the success criteria that we use for the, for the design basis accident, but should be such that the, we don't have large contamination or heavy contamination of large land, and everything should be limited in area, space, that be affected by the accident, and time. So it's not acceptable if you have a correct, if you have a, a situation of core melt in a plant that you have to evacuate large, very large area for a very long number of years, very high number of, of years. Right? This is not acceptable. So the plant should be such that also the environmental, uh, the environmental damage and uh, the impact on the population and the life should be limited in area and in time. We don't specify a level of requirement, the numbers, but you know, the designer, of course, uh, can, can specify some limits, some design objectives for different category of, uh, of accident. Or you can find something in documents at the lower level at the agency, some safety guide, or other technical document, you can find some value so you have an idea what are the level of releases and levels of doses we are talking about. So I think this is something very important. I hope this. Uh... So now here, uh, I included some example of DEX. So you realize what, uh, what is this, uh, uh, th this new term and what kind of accident we are talking about. You see, in the deck without core melt, we have first line anticipated transient without a screen. This has been considered for decades in the design of nuclear power plant. Was not called, was not called the deck, but is a situation we have a safety system and the safety system fails. We have one of the shutdown system doesn't work, fails or doesn't work correctly. So you need something else to deal to deal with this situation. It can be a di di different way to deal, different kind of reactor, different way to deal with this situation, but it's something due to a multiple failure that you have to consider design. Another very common deck that has been considered for years 
is the station blacked out. You have a, loose, a loss of uh, power, external power in your plant, so you need to supply, to supply uh, power to your, your systems. And then, you know, you have your emergency, your emergency diesel, and for some reason, this, you don't work. So then you have the plant com isolated from outside, from a power point of view, and you, you have your emergency diesel don't work, so you have to cope, to cope with this situation. And of course, it's a multiple failure because the diesel normally we are considered a safety system, so you have more than one. So to have the station blackout, you have to have more than one failure. Huh? One failure is not sufficient. And so, and then uh, you see there are, there are other, there are uh, other uh, sequences, but this is very strongly design dependent. Each design will have its own list of design extension conditions. And it's also strongly dependent on the country. Each safety authority can, can have a different view, include one more, one less, so this is really, you have to consider this uh, as a, this list is not frozen for, for, every, for every, uh, every plant. So it's a little different than the situation that we have for design basis accidents that are more or less uh, very well recognized by everybody. But this is still, is still uh, under discussion. Then regarding the core melt, also in this case, what we say, we have to deal with the core, completely core, molten core. We have to deal in the containment. But we cannot deal with all possible phenomena, like this very severe phenomena, like the hydrogen detonation or the direct containment hitting in the, in the containment, large steam explosions. So we have to do something to eliminate, to screen out, this phenomena, to put in the plant some features that make this phenomena, let's say, between brackets, impossible. Hmm? So, and then we cannot design the containment for whatever comes to your mind, because then you don't build any nuclear power plant. So, but we have to, to select some specific situation with molten core for which the containment has to be designed for. Huh? So, so these are part of the design of nuclear power plant. So I hope this uh, helped you a little bit with these design extension conditions, but I can anticipate that also this will be matter of a specific uh, presentation at the end of the week. So we'll, uh, we'll have, uh, so it will be very good that you go back to this concept and uh, explain with different words and with much uh, more detail. Huh? So what happened after Fukushima? What was the effect of this accident on our standards? The, the, agency, the agency, as I said before, started a, a general process to reconsider all the standards. And we, we prepare, we have, uh, and was just published recently, a report, uh, what is the title of the report on Fukushima? Tony, Tony was one of the authors. This uh, big report, report on Fukushima accident. Yeah, this is a very comprehensive report. It's five big volumes plus one smaller volume, general volume, that I suggest you really to read because it's very, very interesting and is available. You can download from the site of the agency. This was just, uh, presented at the general conference uh, in September at the end. So it's something very recent, but very comprehensive. So if, if you are interested, I think uh, I recommend you to have a look at least of the general part, uh, because it's very, very important document. So after all this uh, consideration and after all these uh, studies, we made some, some changes in the, in the requirements, and the work on the requirement has been completed. So all the requirements for site evaluation, for, for operation, for design have been already revised and are ready uh, for printing. I don't know if someone is already printing. And the revision of the safety guide is in progress now. We just uh, started. So let's see what, uh, what uh, are the main areas that have been affected uh, in, 
I, I, first let me say the changes introduced are not too many. We could survive even without uh, making these changes. But this uh, improved the clarity of the document and explained better something what the designer or the safety assessor should do. Regarding defense in depth is further enhancement of the independence of level three and four. That means that the systems that are dealing with design basis accident should be, I say completely, as independent as practicable from the system to deal with core melt situation. That means independent means that the source of power of this system should be independent. We should not require the use of emergency diesel generators that normally we have in the plant for, for DBA to cool the core in a molten core situation. We should have an independent source of power. We should have independent INC. We should have independent direct current uh, battery system for this. So you see the implication on the design, implication of cost of a statement like this is very strong, but on this, I think everybody, our member state agreed, and now is a law. Huh? But I talk about electric power, but we can extend to, to uh, other, other aspects. The external events in Fukushima, the, 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 the level of earthquake and the flooding that was uh, caused by the earthquake was really much higher than was what was considered in the, in the design basis of the plant, what resulted for many reasons. And in the report of the agency, you will understand what these reasons uh, were. So we, we ask that the all items important to safety are designed with a large margin against external events. In the, old, uh, in the old requirement, this was limited to the earthquake. Now we extend it to all, because I mean, Fukushima, the, the cause of the accident uh, was not really the, the earthquake itself, but uh, the damage of the plant, but caused by the, by the tsunami, by the flooding. The plant had responded quite well to, to the earthquake because of the big margins already used in the seismic design of the old structure and uh, the system of the plant. The design, and then we introduce a new category of equipment that we call ultimately necessary. So uh, this set of equipment that you are in a very degraded situation with a molten core, loss of external power, big external events, there is a set of equipment that you would like to survive this. That is, what are these? First, the control room, because if you lose the control room, there's no way you can do anything in the plant. So the control room, the containment, the ultimate sink, and the way to remove the, the heat from the container. So these are, these are features that uh, you should never lose. And we, what we require, you should not lose this feature, even if the external events exceeds quite a bit. Is it how much, we don't say, but quite a bit what you consider in the design. Then will be responsibility of each regulator, each designer, each member state to design how much this, this value can be, how did this value can be determined. But we will say, look, this is the last chance you have to limit the release to the plant, so do the maximum, the best you can do. So this is something, now is a level of the requirement. Okay, the reliability of ultimate sink, this is just a refinement. You see, regarding the station blackout, the plant should be equipped with a dedicated source of power for deck with core melt. We say for deck in general. Dedicated source of power. So even if you lose all the source of power that you rely on the same basic accident, external power, on-site emergency power, you should have a dedicated, separate, different system to feed the, uh, the feature for severe accident. But we are not happy with this. 
and we say something can be even can be even worse than the, the worst uh, deck that you uh, that you can uh, think about. So let's do add in the plant some feature that are well say that are not very expensive is not true but some feature that can help you in the case of a extreme difficult situation to supply power to some critical equipment of the plant or supply cooling to some uh, critical critical equipment of the plant you have seen in fukushima they were from the fire brigade from outside uh, try to put water in the pool of the um, spent fuel in one in one plant. So if the plant had one extra line, a possibility to connect the line to this this pool from outside, this would have been very easy. They didn't didn't put this in the original design because they never thought about this possibility of, of events. So now after these lessons, they said, okay. Even these are very remote, are very far and should never happen in a plant, but it's better that the plant has this capability to connect possibility of cooling and the possibility of uh, supply power to some equipment. This is not part of the design basis of the plant. This, is not, this equipment should not be necessary to deal with this situation that you consider in the design, but something that you didn't think about, something that can happen it can exceed your imagination. Okay, so these are important points. And now, if you read, if you read the revision one of uh, SSR two slash one, you can see this uh, new requirement if you compare with the old one. Then we made some modification. I already mentioned to you. You can read this. The, the very slight modification on accident condition because they include the deck, so we had to change the the definition to include also the deck, but uh, then the, the new definition of safety feature for design extension condition, of course, this definition was not there when the deck were not considered. Then we also included the definition of control state and uh, safety state. So these are, I think, I think uh, concludes uh, my presentation. Only few of you are sleeping, so it was not so bad, about 3 4%. So is uh, physiological.